Good singing, choir. We appreciate it so very, very much. I want you, if you will, please to turn with me to Proverbs chapter number 29. Proverbs chapter number 29 on page 693. 693 in the Old Schofield Bible. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse number 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. There's a lot of mourning going on in America today. And the reason is we have so many wicked leaders in our country. That's one reason. Now, my friend, this is the 4th of July coming up. <coughs> and the 4th of July <coughs> is Independence Day. And this is a, a day in which the United States has uh, given it as a legal holiday celebrating the anniversary of the adoption of the Declaration of Independence in 1776. I was watching a program this uh, last night, I believe, and there were people on the beach, and they were interviewing them, and they were saying, do you know the significance of 1776? They said, no, I don't know. Lying around in America, on America's beautiful beaches, free as a breeze, and don't even know about the Declaration of Independence. This document was a proclamation by the Second Continental Congress declaring the 13 American colonies politically independent from Great Britain. They were declaring very strongly and firmly their freedom. Freedom is something we talked a little bit about on Memorial Day. We want to kind of continue that thought. America has grown and performed greatly in these years since 1776. There's no mistake about it. America has been and still is in many ways one of the greatest countries on earth. Now we should not only be praying for revival in our churches, which we ought to, and in our homes, but also in our country. We need a revival in America. I see the awful hatred that is daily manifested in our country and it just bothers me. It really bothers me to see how America is so filled with ungodliness and hatred, and that is satanically inspired. You know that. This is satanically inspired. I'm disappointed in our political leaders. Both Republicans and Democrats are full of hatred, revenge, and malice. These parties are, in my opinion, think more of their agendas than they do the American people. They have no fear of God. Now, my friend, we have failed in our schools, as I've said many times, we have failed in our schools and in our universities to teach our children the correct history. Many of our young people don't know one thing about true history. In Psalm 36, my friend, in verse number one, the Bible talks about they have no fear of God. So we need a mighty revival, a mighty revival. Only God can send the kind of revival we need. We need to pray. We need a revival to Christ, not to mere religion. We need a revival to biblical doctrines and not to false words of, re of religion. We need a revival to conservative political views and get rid of some of these liberal views that are being propagated throughout our land. Left-wing liberals, as you watch every day, they try to point, paint the fundamental Christian as the biggest danger in this country. Lost people try to discredit the Bible and the me media, the liberal media, tries to put bad light on everything that we have that's precious, even our military. I know that some time ago it was said that our military was down some back in several other administrations, but now it's beginning to pick up. And I heard one report last week that in a little bit our, our military is going to be the greatest and the strongest anywhere in the world. I hope they're right, and I believe they're right. I believe this country under the right leadership can go to higher heights and deeper depths. And I believe we'll be the king of the whole world if we would just do what God would have us do. My friend, I want to say today I'd rather be a fundamental, born again, blood washed child of God, anything you've got to offer out there. Hey, I'm glad that I believe in this old Bible more than I believe in your philosophy. I'd rather have just, hey, Woo, glory. I'd rather have just a piece of this, praise God, than to have all the rest of that that they're putting out out there. I believe in this Bible with all my heart. 
And I have the most profound respect for our military. We've got men and women here that have served in our armed services in the past. Would you just stand up again, will you? Uh, I know you did on Memorial Day, but if you've served in our, in our capacity, I tell you, I praise God for you. Praise God for you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel good towards you. I feel good toward those that have served and that are serving right now. I feel that the prosperity and the pleasures of this great country of ours that we've lived in so long has blinded the minds of many of our American people. And my friend, they're losing, well, they're losing great blessings from this country because of that blindness. We need to pray that God will open our blinded eyes and give us the right senses. When some say that under God should be taken off the pledge, uh, we can see how far we've deviated. When the uh, d judges that we have in our land today, in good old America, they are really uncomfortable when they see the Ten Commandments in their presence. They want to get rid of the Ten Commandments. That shows how far we've gone away from God. So when judges allow, are allowed to dictate to you and me how we're to live our lives, that shows another situation that is alarming. So it's alarming to see our society turn from God. Again over there in Psalm 36 and verse 1, no fear of God before their eyes. Psalm 33, 12, blessed is the nation which God, whose God is the Lord. Hey, there it is. Blessed is the nation. You want this nation to be blessed? Turn to God. And I don't mean turn to some religion. I mean turn to Jesus Christ. Say, oh, Jesus offends people. That's right. Let him offend people. He makes the devil mad too, but praise God, he saved your soul and mine. He's the only one that could save your soul and mine. Let him make the devil mad. Let him make the demons mad. Let him make the liberals stew in their own grease. I'm fed up to hear with the way this country is going in their views. My friends, some brilliant minds and educated leaders do not see what we see as children of God. America the beautiful is beautiful because God has kept this place from blood running in the streets like in many other places of this world. So far we have not seen that blood running in the streets like some places. Crime is here. Oh yes, it's here. And ungodliness keeps death and sorrow busy. But America is still the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let us be thankful today for America, the great land and the great home that we have right here today. Thank God for America. It's sick, it's bad off in some ways, but it's still my home. It's still my land, and I thank God for it. Americans can go places they want to go. When we get out of this church, Everybody can go to wherever you want to go. You're free. You can go any restaurant you want to go to. You can eat any food you want to eat. Everything is here. Everything you could ever want is here. And we're just forgetting that God's pouring it on us and pouring it on us and we're getting further away from God. Let's return to God. Put God first, hallelujah, and let's see America blessed again. The sports feels and I love sports. Oh, God, you know I do. I love sports, but these fields are filled every weekend. The movie makers are hauling in money off of these ungodly rated R movies that they're putting on television all the time now. You can't even look at them. Businesses, men and women both are making money in their businesses. All of the stores are filled with things to buy for anybody's pleasure. You want anything in America, you can get it. Just go to the store. Let me tell you one thing that's thrilled me is to go through the food stores like Ingalls and Bilo and see those shelves lined with food, every kind of food you can name. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. No country like America. You say you're boasting. People don't like for you to talk about America like that. Well, let them lump it. This is a country that has been blessed of God. Don't say it was blessed by man. It was blessed by God. But God used men and women to make this country what it is today. We go to the, our beds every night in peace. We pillar our heads upon our beds. We don't worry about a tyrant sending some bomb over here to blow us out of our beds. We just rest comfortably in our good old beds. 
living in our good old houses. Oh, hallelujah. America's powerful, free, beautiful, but forgotten. They are forgotten. They have all of this, but they've forgotten. America could fall, God forbid. Proverbs 14, 34, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We read of great Americans of the past who led this country from victory to victory against all enemies. Now, I have read these testimonies before, but I want to give a few of them right now in case you haven't heard, because the liberals will never tell you this. And the modern day historians will never print this. But George Washington, when taking the oath of office in New York, April the 30th, 1789, added the words, So help me God. Amen. We read about that and we hear about that. I've got the testimony of that. And then he stooped down and reverently kissed the Bible. Then, of course, historians back then, they gave him the title of Father of the United States. And he was, no doubt. John Adams had great reverence for God's Word. A, not a notation in John Adams' diary said that he resolved to study the Bible on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday mornings. Thomas Jefferson, the highly educated and competent lawyer and superb writer, was a believer. The Bible left its mark on this great American. Jefferson was known to have spent many months studying the Gospels in an effort to understand the basic moral teachings of Jesus Christ. He uh, amazed, uh, was amazed by this uh, great teaching of the Lord Jesus. And he got these passages together in consecutive order and formed what was called the Jefferson Bible. James Madison was a believer also and, and depended on the Bible. Over in Psalm 119, verse 24, the psalmist said, Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. John Quincy Adams was greatly influenced by the Bible. A passage in his diary, dated September 26, 1810, tells us that he had made a practice of reading the Bible through every year. And he read the Bible for one reason, and that was because he wanted to have the wisdom of the Bible. There's wisdom in the Word of God. Amen. There are many other names that I could give that I have in my records back there of men that have given testimony of the Bible and how we depend on it. We better depend on it. As America grew and flourished, fought and overcame and persisted and prevailed, so God sent forth some great preachers into the land. God called people like George Whitfield and other great preachers. Churches sprang up, and people honored the Lord's Day. Evil was always around, and rejectors could always be found. But God blessed preachers and churches until religion grew and became a, a way of life in America. Religion, true religion. There was always the cry against evil and the adherence of the populace when things got too sinful, when things get too bad, people get together and do something about it. Now we're letting evil run rapid in the land and saying nothing about it. Evil was free to exist in America, but restitutions and prohibitions were instilled so that they could not go too far. America believed in God, really believed in God, and they believed in freedom. They believed in freedom and they believed in freedom to worship Jesus Christ and call Him by name. Amen. No, you don't have to be ashamed of Jesus' name. I've told you before, I was a member of an organization one time myself, and when I prayed in Jesus' name, they rebuked me and told me not to pray in His name. I said, what? Don't pray in His name. It offends people. I don't care if it does. That was my attitude. It still is. If I can't pray in Jesus' name, you can take your organization and go somewhere. I'm not going to even be a part of it. I don't want to be a part of something that's not a part of Jesus Christ. Hey, He's the one that died for me. He's the one that shed His blood for me. You think that I'd be a traitor to that great name? There's no way. So among believers today, we are not ashamed of the name Jesus Christ. 
And if it offends you people out there and get converted, then you won't be ashamed of him. Amen. Hallelujah. Let him come into your heart. Hallelujah. Change your life. Give you something worth living for. Give you joy that you never had before. Give you power that you never experienced before. This Jesus, hallelujah, will straighten you out. Make you think like we think. Now, I'm not trying to get everybody to have my opinions. I'm trying to tell you what the Word of God says. I want you to get into the Word of God. Certainly righteousness was exalted in this great nation. Psalm 33, verse 18, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon is upon them that fear Him, upon them that hope in His name. Our nation has had God's eye upon it. No doubt about it. God has seen America grow. Many are jealous, and many are angry, and many would like to live here, and others want this nation destroyed. They're still chanting in Iran, Iran and other places, Death to America, death to America, death to America, death to Israel, death to Israel. They're chanting that in places of this world. They want this country destroyed. But oh, my friend, if we can get the right leadership and keep the right leadership and tell the Maxine Waters of this world to go uh, get them a job <laughs> digging sewers or something, that's all they're good for in my book. Brother, let America move on. Let America move on. We are probably powerful enough to keep foreign enemies out. We're probably rich enough to turn any other nation down. We probably have little to fret over as far as outsiders are concerned. We have nothing to fear outside this country, I don't think. But where we have a fear is inside. Inside this country. Uh, uh, anything that's divided within itself can't stand. And so we've got to get America back in unity and harmony. And if you have to vote the liberals out, vote them out. Amen. Vote them out. I'm telling you, you say you're politicking. Call it whatever you will. I'm preaching. I ain't politicking. <laughs> so we have a multiplicity of enemies inside this country of ours. And uh, who was that Bill... Mara, last night, said he would rather see, I believe it was him, I was listening to all those stupid people, and he said he would rather see a recession in America than to see Donald Trump succeed. Now, he said that. I heard him. How silly can you be? In other words, they would rather, they're not afraid of Donald Trump failing. They're afraid of him succeeding. Now, you, whatever uh, political persuasion you are of, I'm not even talking about that. I'm not a Republican, Democrat, or anything else. I'm just telling you that they, I heard them with my own ears say they'd rather him fail, they, they'd rather have a recession in America than for him to succeed. Isn't that bad? That's hatred. That's demonic. So we have let our fun, our, pl our pleasures, our freedoms blind us to the foes, to the pressures, and to the fools that are in this country right now. Some just cannot see. They cannot see. Some people in churches cannot see. Some people hate what's going on and the, and the victories we've had already in the past year or so. They are hating that. In churches they hate it. I can understand that. I can understand anybody that knows God that won't appreciate, you know, having a good uh, economy having, you know, people overseas respecting us again. I, I count it a blessing. Having the uh, embassy move to Jerusalem, amen and amen. Get ready for Jesus to come back, hallelujah. So we have forgotten our great God. That's our problem. God is unwelcomed in many of our schools right now. God is not reverenced in many of our churches right now. God is blasphemed in many of our businesses today. God is replaced with humanism, materialism, self-gratification, all of these things man-made, man-dreamed, all of these things exclude God, let us have our way. I say get out of the way and let God, of course, now God is not going to be pushed around too long. He'll fix us. You know, Psalm 51 says he's silent right now, but he's going to break the silence. One of these days, they're going to hear from God, literally. They're going to hear that thundering voice when he says, Depart from me. I never knew you. 
That day's coming. We have lowered our standard of righteousness, but God has never. God has never changed. So we have forgotten those who died to keep America free. And I tell you, that's a shame. We're mourning. Whenever the wicked are in rule, people mourn. When the righteous are in rule, people rejoice. Brother, we could have some rejoicing if God will give us that revival. Let's stand, and if you want to come and pray with us, you feel free to come on down, and we'll pray together. And if you're here and you're not saved, we invite you to come to Jesus right now and give your heart to Him. We'd love to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ if you'd like to come this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we bow in the holy presence of a holy God, a God whom we love, a God who has blessed us in this country, in our churches, and in our homes. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. And I pray, Father, that you will send some revival to this church, and to all of our homes, and to America. Father, I, pr I pray that you'll bless America. I pray that you'll guide our leaders, that they might do the right thing, make the right choices, and God, that you'll defeat all of these enemies that are so hateful and mean. And Father, just come against the right thing with viciousness. I've never seen it, Father, like I'm seeing it now. I ask you to stop it. I'm asking you to just help the, this, uh, this country of ours to get going right, get its eyes on Jesus and all for the things of the world. Defeat every enemy, Father. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for letting us be free today. Hallelujah. Thank you for the freedom of going out of this building and going and eating whatever we want to eat, go to the place we want to go, do the things we want to do. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.